We are now nearly one month after release of Microsoft Flight Simulator, with a number of much needed fixes due to arrive late this month. With that said, the Sobo Studio have been very clear that they see Flight Simulator as a platform first and foremost. It's something they will be building upon themselves along with a whole community of third party developers. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the upcoming third party planes, jets, fighters, and airliners. The list of developers that have signed up to produce content for Microsoft Flight Simulator is a very long one. Broadly speaking, it can be broken down into two categories, those who develop planes and those who develop scenery and airports. Of course, a number of developers actually do both, but in this video I'm interested in just the planes, so let's start with PMDG. Now, PMDG announced very early on that they will be bringing their planes to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This includes their own versions of the 737, 747, 777 and the DC-6. More recently, however, they have been very clear on just how long this is going to take. In a post designed to help manage expectations, the developers have said that the first of their planes will likely arrive 6 to 12 months after the launch of the sim. The first of the planes that they want to release is the 737-NG3. PMDG, of course, are known for their highly detailed planes. The 737 will come with an entirely new flight model, along with accurate controls and full functionality. A2A simulations have said they will be bringing the Aerostar 600 to the flight sim. This particular plane feels as though it's somewhat of a pride and joy for the developers. This one will not be a port from existing models, instead they have built a new version of their AccuSim specifically for this release. Like other third party devs, A2A are very clear that the new flight simulator opens up a lot of possibilities that have not been available to older platforms such as X-Plane 11 or Prepared. It's something they are keen to take advantage of then, indeed this, if this holds true, then given time the new sim is going to outshine anything else on the market. Aeroplane Heaven are one of a number of developers who have announced they are working on Concord. Whilst these don't have a release date just yet, it looks as though there will be at least three different versions from different devs. Meanwhile, Aeroplane Heaven are also shown, or have also shown rather, their early work on the iconic Spitfire. Now, getting the opportunity to fly this classic old school World War II plane is something I can certainly see a lot of people wanting to do. Currently, there's not a lot to show. They have the exhaust, some engine and cockpit renders, but uh, as yet, no release date. So this one may be a little way off yet. Also, from the same developers, we've got the Javelin. This one comes under their Control Easy product line, which in essence are highly detailed planes without the complexity of fully simulated cockpits and HUDs. It's a compromise that serves a segment of the simming community who love to fly, but are not necessarily into full-on simulation. One of the advantages of this product line means that development can generally be completed faster, which hopefully means that planes like the Javelin are really not too far away. Now, DC Designs announced they were working on a Concord as well for Microsoft Flight Simulator. More recently, however, they have hinted at a December release date for it. Although they've also said that there's a possibility that this could slip a little, so it's a tentative date at the moment. Beyond the Concord, I think DC Designs have some of what simmers will find to be the most exciting upcoming planes. These are fighter jets that are planned on being released this year, no less. In total, three different fighters are currently lined up, with a release schedule as follows. The F-15 Eagle is set for October, the F-A-18 uh, FA Super Hornet for November, and the F-14 Tomcat is a little bit later, early next year, in January 2021. Now this is a pretty amazing lineup. Right now, there's no planes on the sim that can break the sound barrier. So uh, with these fighters and the Concorde as well on the way, it's going to be very interesting to see how high-speed jets function in the sim and how well it can actually keep up. After all, the slowest of these is a little below 2,000 km per hour, whilst the fastest is a bit over 3,000 km per hour. This is significantly faster than anything else currently available, and personally, I'm really looking forward to seeing how these ones actually play out. Aerosoft are not only a third party, but also a Microsoft partner. They've worked hand-in-hand -hand with Sobo Studio to help deliver the SDK, 
and will surely be starring in an upcoming partnership video series. Beyond that, Herosoft are well known both as publishers and developers within the sim and community. For Microsoft Flight Simulator, they are currently working on the CRJ, which they discussed and briefly previewed in a recent video, you can see a clip of it right here. More recently, they have given a sneak peek at the cockpit of the Twin Otter, which they currently have in a very early development. Aerosoft have also been very keen to point out that their familiarity with the software development kit has allowed them to produce planes to an extremely high standard, and they've also strongly believed that this new simming platform will allow them to do things with planes that have not previously been done. So then, let's look at some of the upcoming third-party planes, and whilst these of course will all be from paid content, it's obvious that a significant amount of work is actually going into them. As a platform, Microsoft Flight Simulator is still in the very early days, but already it's showing a lot of promise. It's going to be very interesting then to see where all of this goes. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.